Hey there, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. I wanted to do a video and show you how I create a content system to make content production easier with a small content team. It's often the case that if you work for a startup or even a scale-up, the content team is really small, so you might struggle with creating content consistently for all the channels that you manage. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a content system that makes it easy to create content batches for the upcoming weeks or months. I will first show you the theory behind this and then how it looks in practice. Before we get started, please like the video and subscribe to my channel so you get notified when I upload new content. And now let's get started. First, I'm going to explain what I mean by content system. So in every system, you have input and output. In this case, what happens in between is the actual content creation process. So if you want to create content for the next week or for the next month, let's say, you need to know what the output needs to look like so that you can decide what input you need. Let me make this a bit more clear. Let's say that you are planning a content batch for the month of March. You want to create all your March content in one go. In this case, the output will be all the content, all the social media posts, blog articles, YouTube videos, and so on, everything that you want to create in March. And if you know what you want to create or what the deliverables should be, then you can destructure those and work backwards to understand what the input needs to be. Let's make this more tangible now. I'm going to show you an example of what your March content could look like. Let's say that you only focus on three channels, YouTube, blog, and LinkedIn. And for YouTube, you want to create four long-form videos, one per week. Then for your blog, you want to create eight articles, two per week. And for LinkedIn, you want to do a mix of videos and images. So you're going to repurpose the blog articles into image posts, and you will repurpose the videos into video snippets. The cadence can vary, of course, in the amount of content that you create, but it's just an example so that you understand what I mean by output and input. Now, if we know that that is the output that we want to create, it's time to look at the input that needs to go into the system. In this case, if I want to create YouTube videos, I know that I will need video thumbnails, I'm going to need an intro and outro, probably a subscribe screen, some transition screens or transition music or effects, as well as background music and sounds. Then, for the blog articles, I'm going to need some header images that should have a similar style. Finally, for LinkedIn, I might need video thumbnails, intros and outros that might be different than the YouTube ones, as well as blog article thumbnails. So, if I know what my input will look like and what my output should look like, I can now go ahead and create the actual templates that will be used as input. But next to the templates, I need, of course, the raw materials. So, for example, the raw videos, which could be podcasts or webinars, the blog articles, because otherwise there's nothing to repurpose. If I have, for example, white papers or ebooks, I also need the downloadable assets. And other things like logos, if I'm doing, for example, some partnership announcement or a new customer story or case. And photos of thought leaders, employees, customers, partners, depending on the types of LinkedIn posts that I want to create. And speaking of this, here are some examples of LinkedIn posts that you can turn into templates, so you can batch produce this every time you need to create content for the next month. These are suitable for a B2B SaaS company, but they apply for sure to B2C as well. For example, you could share a quote from a thought leader or from a customer or derived from a user review. You could do a promo of a blog article or opinion article. Promote a white paper, a checklist, a cheat sheet. Do a promo for an upcoming event, be it offline event or webinar. Share co-marketing initiatives that are done in collaboration with partners. Share company milestones, new job openings or share case studies, customer stories, and impact numbers. Once you decide the exact type of posts you want to have as output, you can go ahead and create the templates. Now, in the same way that you will need templates and then raw materials and logos and so on as input, you also need a couple of other things for output. 
So if you do blog articles, for example, or customer stories or white papers, you should have a content calendar in place so that you can properly distribute your efforts. Also, you should have a social media calendar that needs to include both LinkedIn and YouTube or any other channel that you plan to use in March for content distribution. Okay, so now that you know what the theory looks like, let's see how you can set up this type of content system using Canva. For this purpose, I already created some templates and I grouped them in a folder so that you can see how I structure the work to keep it organized. So the first thing here, you see that I have projects, templates, and brand assets. I'm going to show you the brand assets first. Canva helps you set up your brand kit so you can choose your colors, color palette, add your logo, choose the fonts that you want to use, add your brand voice, and some photos that you plan to use in your templates. Next, we have templates. And here you see a lot of recommendations or ready-made templates from Canva. You can choose to start every time with a new template. For example, if you want to do social media posts, you can choose from what Canva recommends here. Or you can go here under brand templates and reuse your own brand templates. These are easily created if you click here, add new, and then you choose the type of post or template that you want to create. And then when you are done, you just save it as brand template, and then it will appear in this library. So we have here the brand assets, then we have templates, and you can see that I have some templates here saved, and it says brand template. And then we have projects where I keep the actual work for the month. If you go here at the top to folders, you see that I have a folder for March. Then we have designs, brand templates, images, videos, and so on. But for now, I'm just going to show you the folder for March. In this folder, I already created some subfolders for the channels that I plan to use, YouTube, blog, and LinkedIn. In each of these, I'm going to add the content that I plan to create. So let's say that I want to batch the LinkedIn content first. I'm going to go here and just add either create design if you want to start from scratch or add designs if you've already created some. I'm going to click on add designs and get them from projects because I already created here March LinkedIn posts and I will move it in this folder. So now I'm in the folder for March 2023 LinkedIn and I have March LinkedIn posts. I'm going to show you what this looks like. What I like to do is first use this grid view and just create all the blank slides for the templates that I want to have in the end. So if you click here, you can add a new page. And I like to use the dates as names for these templates so that I know when each of the posts needs to be shared. So for example, on the 1st of March, I plan to use this quote template. Then the 5th of March, I'm promoting some content strategies kit. 8th of March, I'm sharing some industry insights. 12th of March, some statistics or so. Then for the 15th of March, I will have a carousel. You see that it's five tips for some successful uh, building a home business. So I'm going to have tip one, two, three, four, and five, and then the last screen. And I have some blank templates as well. This will be 18th of March, 22, 26, and 30 of March. This type of setup gives me the big picture overview super quickly, so it's really easy to understand what I need to create, what I need to distribute, and where. Going back to my folder, I now have the LinkedIn subfolder populated, so I can do the same for the blog, header images, and for the YouTube videos. I hope this was useful. Please like the video and subscribe so you get notified when I add new content. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.